Welcome to another Team Talk episode. We admit that in recent times we've been lacking a bit with uh, Team Talk updates and videos, but we promise that now we will again release Team Talk videos more frequently, more often. Okay, the next big topic where a lot of things happened are enclosures. Nice. For the Exxon Beta, we have the bare metal enclosure version, which is called the Skeleton, because it kind of only holds together the lens mount the tripod mount and the electronic. The next kind of shell around that skeleton is the so-called simple enclosure. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's called simple because it's kind of the simplest form, shape, way that we came up with. And the idea is that you can 3D print it yourself and kind of just add it around the skeleton that all developer kits ship. It's very with. light. Yes, it's uh, simple, light and this can do 4K. <laughs> <laughs> the, the plastic is all 4K quality. Nice. <laughs> it's my favorite plastic. There's a fan inside at the top, pulling the air from the bottom up. So where the skeleton is kind of uh, almost entirely passively cooled, only the microset has a small fan attached to the back because the FPGA is the uh, component producing the most heat in the camera. Mm -hmm. The idea is here that also the sensor gets actively cooled with a larger fan that spins slower and that way is uh, quieter than in this set where the fan is smaller and you can hear it sometimes. Then the next kind of iteration of the enclosure design is the so-called full enclosure, mm -hmm. which is not meant just as simple shell, but as a full-fledged, real, proper camera enclosure. And for that, we have concepts that we kind of silently published on the website some time ago already. Concept art. We <laughs> Why was it silently? Uh, because we actually planned to do a team talk at the time, but then right. with all the EU project action, we didn't actually get to do it. And then we didn't want to wait for half a year to actually release the concept images. So we released them and didn't put them into that much of a context at the time. But now we do. But first, let's take a look back at what we showed in crowdfunding. The PCB stack was actually much simpler at the time. It was a stack of just three boards and the dual micro SD module, which we depicted in this concept, was actually scrapped after the campaign and integrated into the power board that is not in this concept yet. So the general enclosure design concept, what we showed in crowdfunding, was based on or inspired by small form factor compact photography cameras, actually. If you look, there are typically design elements that the material and color choice is very monochromatic. You have silver, white elements and black elements, and that's it. There are no color elements and the rest is details in the different surface finishes or certain gradients created by beveled edges and curves. But now, since the complexity, the modularity, and therefore the thickness of the PCB stack increased, we now have a total of five layers of boards in the stack. This also meant that the enclosure had to be thicker in the end, and that didn't match the design principles of a compact photography camera anymore. So what we actually looked at next as kind of source of inspiration or pointers and ideas for design elements were medium format cameras, which are typically much thicker and have a much longer body simply because of the nature of the larger film stock. And then we figured what are the things that filmmakers need that medium format cameras don't have. Where do we want to attach accessories? Where do we need mount points? Where are things that uh, kind of need a very solid structure from the integrity of the enclosure? So you have the concept images. We have a concept image of our intern Frederick holding the camera, I remember. Yeah, sure. Yes, we combined uh, the digital concepts with uh, Real-life photography. Wow. <laughs> and by now, with help of a few uh, people from the community, we have a bunch of 3D printed enclosure concepts of this very uh, full enclosure. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that you have a kind of inner shell that's comparable to the skeleton. It looks a bit different in this case. It's made from bent aluminum. What we have 3D printed here this in is plastic, plastic is yeah. of course all meant to be made from metal, bent aluminum plates or CNC milled aluminum. 
So the idea is that it's really rugged and production ready kind of enclosure. And uh, what we have inside, which kind of replaces the skeleton, is this piece. It's a bent aluminum metal sheet. And uh, around that we then put the actual outside enclosure. It's kind of the inner skin and the outer skin, as we call the parts. Then there are parts on the bottom and on the top, which kind of uh, put it into a sandwich-like uh, mm. design. Delicious. <laughs> and there's the outer skin, which revolves around the rest of the camera, which kind of goes like this. It all attaches together and forms ultimately <laughs> this one where we screwed everything together already properly. Very good. And the idea is still that every part is kind of kept modular. The lens mount is a separate part that you can easily swap out. The connector plates are kind of custom designed plates that you put in. So with the plug-in modules and the extension shields at the side, the idea is still that you can swap out parts. You have to kind of take apart more of the enclosure, of course, than in the skeleton when you want to replace hardware. But everything is designed for being taken apart, so there are no glued components or nothing that kind of breaks when you open it. Or Sounds good. Yeah, everything is screwed. The O. From the, the, o, the O is a kind of uh, our open trademark, the O with the apertures, and at the same time it lets the air through. Yeah, and there's a new iteration already now that's beyond the state we have 3D printed. That's also a result of the collaboration with an industrial designer in Germany who looked at this concept and kind of redesigned the whole thing with his ideas and his concepts. And instead of uh, having this bent aluminum part, which kind of makes everything a bit floppy. Wobbly, yeah. <laughs> floppy is the floppy right because word. Because even though this is 3D printed, even if this is metal, it will still not attach here properly and kind of be the weakest link in the camera concept. And he replaced all the side parts, all the front parts with single aluminum pieces. So it's more like a full camera box made of individual walls now. What we also created already by now, which is of course a small side product, but why not mention it here, is our own Axiom uh, lens cap. That every one of you can 3D print because the files are already on GitHub and you can just send it to your printer and have your own Axiom brand <laughs> lens cap. <laughs> yeah, that's the beauty of it, isn't it? Like yes. with the German designer, he can just remix everything. Exactly. And I'm sure that there won't be just three enclosures in the future. There will be lots of variations, maybe a separate enclosure for aerial uh, photography, where it's kind of made as light as possible, leaving everything out that's not required. The screws, the attachment holes and everything. Maybe there will be an enclosure more suited for kind of shoulder mounting cameras or whatever the community will come up with. And of course, all the files are released, all the files are shared, can be downloaded, remixed. Amazing. And something that I didn't mention before, but do now. Uh, since we don't want to replace the enclosure with changing the sensor. Let's say there's a new sensor in the future that we want to support and of course it has a different kind of package, different size, different shape. Uh, in the current state the enclosure of the skeleton is milled for the CMV 12000. Yeah. It kind of fits only the sensor, the, the distances are all adjusted for that. And the idea was, or the, the challenge was, how can we design the enclosure but make it in a way that it's modular for any sensor. And what we came up here is uh, a part that kind of attaches the sensor to the enclosure. So a separate part that uh, takes care of the mechanical characteristics of the sensor, the distances. And if you switch sensor in the future, because there's a new sensor, you can just take out this one, pop in the new one, and it should fit with the same enclosure as before. Optimal case. Yes. What we also did is we visited uh, Manfred's basement, where we uh, even shot a team talk some time ago. Yeah, the uh, best one yet. <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately, when we were there shooting, we didn't have the time to uh, actually start 
producing parts with the CNC mill because they were shooting the team talk tour already all day. Yeah. And so we visited Manfred again without the team talk, only shooting how a skeleton is milled. Yeah, because if you didn't notice that all of these aluminum pieces were actually milled in Manfred's basement yes. by Manfred. Incredible. And uh, the process, how it works, is that he starts by placing a raw aluminum block into the CNC mill. We have an automatic tool changes. The whole procedure, if I remember correctly, was around 20 minutes per skeleton. It's pretty, pretty quick. And the difference between this skeleton and this skeleton, obviously, is color. the color. And this we also do ourselves. It's a, a ceramic Coating. coating that's spray painted on the raw piece after sandblasting and is hardened in a kitchen oven. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> an industrial professional oven. It's a very industrial professional kitchen oven that we rented for pizza making and skeleton baking. <laughs> we can Don't leave that up. up. <laughs> Bad for you. <laughs> yes. And so uh, we were thinking about anodizing first, yeah. but for that the process is rather kind of complex. And the uh, ceramic coating looks great, works pretty easily to apply, and it's uh, adding an additional layer of kind of surface protection, which is also great. But now uh, a question may occur, why don't you just order those pieces? Yes, that's a good question. The problem is uh, with low volume production, and we only built 15 cameras so far, so no large facility would consider that a proper order volume. For the small volumes, uh, the price is very high. Yeah. So that applies both to the electronics as well as mechanical manufacturing. Uh, for example, for the EU project, we ordered custom PCBs that were rather complex, 16 layer with FPGAs and RAM on it. And uh, we ordered these parts at a facility that is providing prototype manufacturing services for projects like this. And we built five boards and these five boards cost us 15,000 euros. That's true. <laughs> So if we had built all the exon beaters that we shipped so far at facilities like these, all the crowdfunding money would have been spent already after the first Evaporated. week. Yes. So doing it ourselves not only keeps the prices down, but also allows us to iterate with the hardware quickly. Also, you have to notice that these prices, they are, if you change a version, then it starts from count zero again. Exactly. So you can only uh, order high quantities of the same thing. Exactly. Once you start building thousands of these, the prices drop significantly. Yeah. But yeah, for low volume production and also when we start shipping, these are not high volume productions. We won't <laughs> ship 1000 pieces as next step. It still makes sense to build everything ourselves. Yeah. Not only for the money part, but also because we can control quality as individually as we can. We can address all issues that arise that uh, an external facility for a slow, uh, yes. small volume wouldn't really care about because they... It would they make sense if, if it would be all the same uh, board for the same PCB for cameras, but since we have five to seven yes. PCBs per camera... It's and they can also be configured differently. Yeah. Some people require different plug-in modules. In the future, there will be different sensor modules, so you can kind of pick the pieces and build your own camera. Yes. And that adds to that kind of always being low quantity manufacturing. Thank you for watching this team talk. I hope it was very informative and I hope you learned something. You should learn something every day, something new, of course, not something old. <laughs> and we will see each other next time. <laughs>